Hello, I'm BLR editor Elaine Quayle. Obesity and the consumption of beverages has been in the news recently with New York City Mayor Bloomberg limiting the size of sugary drinks that can be sold and schools banning sodas from their vending machines. We know that employers, especially those who are having wellness initiatives, are interested in this topic and about the beverages that they're selling in their facilities. Since June is National Employment Wellness Month, we've asked nutritionist Jason Muchnick to join us to discuss this topic. Welcome, Jason. Thank you very much. Are beverages a factor in obesity and other health problems? Uh, absolutely, I think so. Um, while there's certainly a lot of factors that um, uh, may affect health problems, I think uh, beverages uh, may be one of the biggest offenders. Uh, reason being because usually when you have a beverage, uh, one that uh, has a lot of sugar in it, uh, that's, that's really the only nutrient you're getting. You're getting a lot of calories and not necessarily a lot of nutrition, vitamins, minerals, other things that the body just needs to run. Uh, so when you're having a beverage that can be, you know, say very large, it can be 300 to 500 calories depending oh. on the size and depending on the amount of sugar that's put in that drink. That's almost as much as a meal for some people. So here's uh, you know, a, a food item or a beverage item that contains as much calories as a meal and it's not going to do much for your health and is not going to do much to satisfy your appetite as well. Are diet sodas a good alternative? Um, I actually think uh, uh, that there, there is some controversy there, but um, I, I've always been fine with diet sodas and uh, sugar substitutes. I think that the, whereas we are quite confident about the science that, you know, excess sugar from a regular drink can lead to a variety of health problems including weight gain, diabetes, and all uh, sorts of secondary problems that can come along with that such as high blood pressure and heart disease. Um, we're, we're kind of on the fence with, uh, with diet sodas uh, and um, sugar substitutes like, uh, like sweet and low and like saccharin and things like that. Um, I would say intuitively since these are artificial substances it might be best to limit them if you want to have a diet soda, say have you know one or two a day, or a couple of packets of, uh, of the artificial sweetener uh, uh, a couple of times a day. That's certainly fine. I think it's a, a good tool for reducing the overall number of calories that you're taking in. And what about juices and juice drinks, flavored waters? Well, I would say, well, in terms of juice, I would say juice is actually more akin to a soda than it is the original fruit. Oh. If you think about it, when you, when you take that fruit and turn it into a juice, you're almost doing the same thing as you would when you're making a processed food, like a candy bar or something like that. You're taking a natural substance and turning it into a, a concentrated sugar beverage, if you will. Um, so, again, it's a way like soda to kind of flood the system with excess calories. Uh, I like to use the term, you know, eat your fruit, don't drink it. Uh, when you have a piece of fruit, you're having a relatively low amount of sugar and getting all of the fiber and nutrients that come along with that fruit as well. And the juice, you don't get any of that. So. And of course, we'll have to address caffeine. At 3 o'clock here, there's a line in front of the soda machine. Sure, sure. Um, what do you think about, is that a problem? Uh, I, I've actually always been just fine with caffeine, again, in moderate amounts, like the artificial sweeteners. Um, you know, caffeine is a, is a very mild uh, stimulant, uh, you know, as long as you're not having five to six cups a day, I think caffeine is fine. It's been shown to, you know, in, increase uh, or improve mental acuity, even improve athletic performance for those that, you know, play sports or what have you. So, um, I, you know, a cup of coffee in the morning and a cup of coffee later in the day is certainly fine. What I'm more concerned about with those uh, coffee and energy drinks are the other things going into those coffee and energy drinks, such as the sugar the high-fat dairy coming from creamer. Uh, just one great example, um, at Starbucks if you have a medium frappuccino, I guess they call that a grande, uh, that's about 500 calories for oh, that. Gosh. <laughs> just for that beverage there. Uh, the energy drinks, if they come in a big 16 ounce can, you're probably looking at 200 to 250 calories. So, uh, you know, um, coffee itself, just the coffee, is an almost calorie free beverage. Uh, maybe five calories a cup. So if you're having, say, just as an example, a cup of coffee with a tablespoon of cream, and uh, or half and half rather, and um, you know even two teaspoons of regular sugar, you're looking at a 50 calorie beverage, and I think that, relatively speaking, is is pretty modest. So it's moderation is key. Exactly. What about uh, tap water? How can we encourage our employees to just drink? To so just water? drink regular water. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, the. Uh, 
bottled water or, or tap water is just fine. I mean, we have very high standards here, um, in just in this country, you know, or the state for the amount of, you know, minerals and other additives that can be in the water. So, you know, if you don't like the taste of tap water, that's fine. Um, you can go with the bottled water. Yeah, you can go with the bottled water. Um, also, again, as a moderated um, uh, strategy, you can, uh, there's like crystal light and other flavorants that you can add to your water. They are uh, artificial sweetener based, so again, it was, it'd be the kind of thing you wouldn't want to abuse. But uh, you can use that to flavor your water for no calories, if you like. So the best thing for afternoon slump, what would you suggest? Right. Well, afternoon slump, I mean, caffeine might help you, but I think that the most major problem when somebody experiences that 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, crash, if you will, it, it's more of a blood sugar issue. Uh, a lot of people have a very big lunch. They have that lunch hour. they got to get you know, their food into their body. Uh, they have an incredible, maybe not an incredible amount of food, but a large amount of food. Uh, their blood sugar goes up. They feel energized. But then what tends to happen with most people is the body responds. The blood sugar comes down to a level below its original state. And when blood sugar is very low, you start to feel extremely lethargic. So, uh, again, it has more to do with the food, uh, I would say, than actual energy levels, so to speak. Uh, or their mental energy levels. Uh, a good solution to that would be to have a more modest lunch, maybe save a quarter of it, save half of it, and have that second half maybe at 2 to 3 p.m. Or if you like, have a modest lunch and have yourself a nice snack. Um, well, that could be anything really, a cup of yogurt, um, some pretzels, a piece of fruit, uh, anything you like really, just to keep that, that, that stream of food steady throughout the day as opposed to and of course, that keeps your productivity up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, several people here knew I was going to talk to you. They want to know about snacks in the snack machine. Is there anything that's helpful that they, you know, can get from a vending machine? Uh, well, I have two, two ideas there. Um, number one, I would think anything that's like a nut based, like a trail mix or a handful of peanuts uh, is usually pretty good. Um, if they're honey roasted, I, I would say that's a little bit overboard because they're kind of coated in sugar. But um, a handful of nuts is a, is a good one. Um, also, um, I'm, I've always been a fan of uh, pairing foods, meaning, um, you know, a bag of potato chips, for obvious reasons, is not your best snack choice. But if you can have a small bag of potato chips and pair that with something a little more nutritionally beneficial, like an apple, like, say, some baby carrots from home or something like that, um, you'll have, a again, overall a snack that's a little more nutritionally sound. And it's also going to um, satisfy your appetite a lot better than just those potato chips. <laughs> well, thank you, Jason. For more on wellness topics, go to hrblr.com.